Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jeb Smith. In today's video, we're going to talk about new construction versus resale, older homes, which should you consider in a market like we're in right now? Got a lot of people reaching out on other videos that I've done asking, you know, what are the differences between new construction and resale properties? And we're going to talk about some things that you need to consider if you're considering new construction in this environment. As many of you know, we're we're in a market right now that it's tough to find resale properties just because inventory is low, buyer demand is high, and so a lot of people are considering new construction. New construction is one of those things that could help uh, the housing market out considerably um, because more supply would essentially allow you know homeowners more options. It would also help with the buyer demand side, and and new construction is nice because it's newer. But there are some downsides to new construction. There have been some recent changes in the way new construction builders are handling new construction. And I want to take a little bit of time and talk about it. Um, you know, it, it comes up again quite often. And it's something I want to address in a little bit more detail because, you know, my typical answer in, in the new construction versus resale or older construction is, you know, if you can buy a property, um, if you're considering new construction in, in one of the first phases of a development, and you know in and, and they're planning on building out these phases and and again it, it all depends on where you're located uh, but typically speaking if you can get in the early phases of a development then you know you can get the benefit of appreciation as the new developments are built in that in that community so if you know if you can get in the early stages then a lot of times new construction is nice because you get the benefits of them continuing to build it out you know, getting appreciation, so on and so forth. But right now, some things are changing, and there's also things that that I don't um, typically address in in that question, and I want to talk about them today. But before we do that, let's talk about some of the things, you know, some of the ways new construction is being handled today versus the way that it was handled just a couple of years ago. So typically, builders would, you know, come up with a master plan, if you will. They would have different models. They would have prices of those models in, say, phase one. And, you know, that would be the base price. And if you were planning on doing any upgrades to the property, then obviously that base price would rise based on the upgrades that you chose and so on and so forth. And so, you know, that's the way builders have always worked. And so if you were interested in a development, um, assuming you didn't have to go through a lottery to get a house or whatever, you showed up, you saw the model homes, you were interested in a community, you decided that you wanted to purchase one, you picked your model. That was the price, and you know, on you went. You signed a contract, and you know, in six, eight months, depending on what the time frame was, the property was built. Um, and and then you you know you just move forward or what have you. Well, that's changed, right? Because of you know what's happening with supply, with demand at the moment, builders are no longer, in some cases, even setting a price at all on new construction. I've recently read articles where builders are building out communities with no prices at all. Um, you, as a buyer, come in and put your best price in. You offer what you think the home is worth, which seems crazy. Um, in other cases, they have a base price in mind, but they're no longer just accepting that base price because now there might be multiple people bidding on that property. And so, therefore, you have to come in with your highest and best price. In that case, maybe you're countering or you're in a multiple offer situation against another buyer in these new development communities. And this has never been a thing um, until until recently, just because of where construction has gone. And, you know, there's a lack of it um, in the U.S. as a whole. And with, you know, some some of the issues that we have ongoing right now with, you know, lumber supply and building cost and what have you, builders are kind of behind the eight ball. They, they can't build fast enough and it's actually Actually costing them more money to build than it ever has before and in some cases buyers are in contract on properties that are new construction and, and finding out that the builder is going to raise the price even though they're under contract the builder is going to raise the price on that property because of costs that they're incurring in the building aspect and so you know buyers are being basically you know thrown out of contract if you will now buyers have the option of moving forward but you know, not maybe at the price that they originally agreed upon. And so that is some of the downfalls right now with new construction. So if you're out there looking at new, new construction, just understand that, you know, there are some nuances in the way that it's handled versus just a couple of years ago. 
But there are pros to owning new construction um, versus resale, but there are also some downsides. There's definitely some benefits to owning resale property, property, you know, existing construction, if you will. When I say resale, these are homes that have been lived in and, and are back on the market. Um, but, you know, and these are things that typically don't come up. These are things that builders don't really get into um, when when talking about new construction, but it's it's things that that you as a buyer should consider when buying these properties. And, you know, the pros I think are pretty obvious, you know, in, in new construction, you know, you get a newer property, uh, you know, the maintenance on them is obviously or, or typically going to be less, you know, versus an existing home or a resale home, just because everything in the property is new. There's typically a home warrant, you know, like a builder's warranty on that property for 10 years or so, depending on where you live. So there are definitely benefits to, to buying into new construction. You know, a lot of times you get to pick the the finishes of the property. You know, if you do it through the building design centers, or maybe you're having a contractor come in as, as soon as it closes, or what have you. So, and another thing you may consider in new construction versus existing construction is amenities. Right, when they build a lot of these newer communities, a lot of times they, you know, there are amenities provided within the community, whether it's swimming pools or parks or maybe new schools in some cases. So, you know, there are things built around these communities in, in a lot of cases, depending on where they're built. And that could be a benefit of, of owning in one of these communities. But understand, a lot of times that might come with a cost. It might come with higher property taxes in that area uh, because of bonds that are used to uh, to finance those improvements, those amenities that they're adding to the community it may come with Mela Roos. Here in California, we have something called Mela Roos that basically finances the infrastructure of, of some of these new developments, these new communities. So that might be a benefit. Um, it might be a con depending on, you know, uh, how you approach it and, and whether or not the cost makes sense to you. So that's another thing that you should consider as well. Those are really the benefits to, to owning new construction or buying new construction. Uh, but there's some downsides and some things that that aren't really talked about that I think you need to consider if you're considering new construction outside of the way that it's being handled right now with with you know being bid up or or potentially costs being changed or what have you. And that is, you know, a lot of times when new construction is built, it's being built in areas where they have available land. Typically, when there's available land, this is going to be further from, say, a city. It's going to be further from a main area. And so location, a lot of times, is something you have to consider. A lot, you know, most of the times when they're building these new developments, they're not able to build them, you know, in close proximity to the city because, you know, they're building outwards of the city in most cases. So location plays a part in there, right? You're, you know, buying new construction typically means that you're going to be further away from, from where everything is at. Another thing um, here in Southern California, at least, is when they're building new construction, they're trying to fit as many homes in a development as physically possible. So the lots are typically smaller than than those of existing construction, right? Those that were built in, at least here in Southern California in the 60s and 50s and 60s and 70s have larger lots than anything that's been built recently uh, because back then they weren't so worried about land, right? Whereas now land is sparse. Again, they're having to build outside of areas and go and go further and further uh, east um, here in on the West Coast. And, and when they do that, they're trying to fit as many of these homes in a community so that they can maximize profit. So a lot of times you're going to have smaller lots. And another thing that you need to consider is when you're buying these properties, new construction is, you know, when you're when you're doing the building design center and you're you're getting your property, you're essentially just getting the property itself, right? The outside of the home is typically finished. The inside is going to be finished based on what you decided to do. But a lot of times the hardscape, the landscaping, none of that's going to be completed. So that's money that you're going to have to come in after you close and, and put into the property to finish that property. Other things to consider are things like blinds on the interior, window treatments, that sort of thing. When you buy a new, con, you know, a, an existing home, a lot of that stuff is done. In most cases, you know, you have the benefit of of going into a property and they already have the blinds up or the shutters on the windows. New construction, typically speaking, you go into that property and there's nothing on the window, so you've got to weigh the cost in addition to you, you know your purchasing price of of doing these additional items when you're buying new construction. And a lot of people get caught up in the idea of buying a new home. It's exciting and 
you know, it's new and you get to make all these upgrades. And then they get into the property and realize that there's additional costs that have to be incurred in order to make that property the way they want it. And, you know, buying a home is an emotional, an emotional process. People buy emotionally, they justify logically. So they don't really think it all the way through a lot of times until they're closed. And then they realize that there's additional money they have to come up with in order to close on that property. So, you know, location, you know, the the additional maintenance on that property, the lot size, those are typically things that you have to consider. And then lastly, price, right? You know, again, depending on where the property is being built, you are buying, uh, you know, a new property. Typically speaking, newer construction will, will appreciate as fast, if not faster than existing construction. So there's not really a huge benefit there, but long-term, the maintenance on that property is going to be less, right? There's going to be less things to do to that property. And, and so that's definitely a benefit, but you know, you need to consider, you know, location, you need to consider these things when you're considering the, the resale versus new construction. Don't just go in, you know, wanting the new property because it's new and throw everything else out the window. Real estate is all about location. So, you know, if, if you're buying a new construction property, but you're way out of the way, that could affect the value long term. Whereas if you buy something maybe closer to a city or closer to um, a more popular area, you know, the, the resale property might actually appreciate faster than that other property just based on location. So just make sure you're weighing your pros and cons. And even if you're buying new construction, make sure you're working with a real estate agent, right? The, the builder has agents in-house, um, you know, they, they allow you to come in with a real estate agent by having a real estate agent on your side you know, that agent can help you. That agent can guide you and make sure you're asking the right questions when going under contract. And again, this doesn't cost you anything as a buyer. It's being paid for by the builder um, for that that agent to come and help represent you and make sure that you're you're you're, you're weighing both sides. And, and again, if you're buying existing construction as well, make sure you're working with a professional because they're going to be able to, you know, to guide you through that process as well. And, and hold your hand and make sure you, you know, you're getting taken care of, make sure you're getting a fair price and, and what you're agreeing to is reasonable in those cases. So those are just some of my thoughts on new construction versus resale versus existing. I know it comes up a lot, so I did want to address it. Um, and as many of you know, my channel is all about real estate. So if you're, you know, you're still watching, you haven't done so already, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. If you find, found the video helpful, um, give me a thumbs up. Um, and if you have additional questions for me, comments about this, do me a favor, leave them below. But for now, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I definitely appreciate the support and hope to see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.